the Jesus girl. Jesus girl. Hey, it's the diary of a Jesus girl. Let the wings of the spirit of the Lord just as well. You are in it, but you know you're not a part of this world. And for the swan, you should never cast your pearl. Yes, it's just a diary of a Jesus girl. Welcome to the Diary of a Jesus Girl podcast, where we discuss real life issues of the committed Christian woman. This podcast will inspire you to love Jesus and impact lives like Jesus. And now it's time for your host, Crystal Day, award-winning author, speaker, and Christian coach. So welcome to the Diary of a Jesus Girl podcast. And we want to give God thanks for another episode the podcast has just been a blessing. We are uh, we are over 4,000 downloads so far. We are still on the top charts of Apple. We are still growing. We are still loving Jesus. And we are just talking the things, right? And um, that's why I'm enjoying this podcast so much. I, I didn't expect to enjoy the journey of Diary of a Jesus Girl as I am right now, but it's a blessing. So, of course, again, when we know that once you're listening to Diary of a Jesus Girl podcast, you're, we're going to talk about topics that sometimes people don't want to talk about. Or if it's being talked about, it's a, a different spin, right? We say the things that nobody wants to say. And our guests, we have two guests today. And let me give you a background. So, one of the guests, um, Colina, doctor, one of my clients, author, speaker, coach, she actually launched her platform, Sister Circle, and she actually invited me and um, two other, other coaches to be on our platform to talk about celibacy. Now, I'm like so over talking about these sex topics, purity topics, like, yeah, like let somebody else, because everybody know my business already. But, you know, it's Colina, so I was like, okay, I can't say no. And to be honest, doing the interview, I was truly blessed. I was truly blessed by Colina. So Colina is married. So normally hearing a married woman talk about sexual purity, everybody eyebrow will be up because I'm like, I mean, she'll get sick. So <laughs> what she know, right? <laughs> and the truth. But, you know, God is so intentional. And that's why I love this podcast because Colina shared a perspective on, on her platform. And I want you to go on her YouTube channel to go and listen and follow her. I will see, I'll share, you know, the link in the show notes, but she shared such a, a, a different perspective. I'm like, you know what? We're going to record a podcast because I believe that this needs to be shared. So Kalina doctor and also Miss Shanique Shan. No, Shanique is a little quiet powerhouse, right? You know, them, them sell silent river run deep. So if you see her, she can't match ants, but when she open her mouth, you're like, all right, get the offering plate. Just get the offering. Just, 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 you know, like when she's talking, I'm like, you, I literally mute my mic because I'm in the background like, yes, girl. So I know that you will enjoy this conversation. So I want you to like, subscribe, share with persons because again, let, we are talking about sex. We're still talking about sex, right? Um, This thing about sex is taboo in the church. No. The church is going to discuss the things that are happening and we're going to teach people biblical principles, right? So I want to welcome Kalina and Shanique Shan on today's podcast. And I want to, we know in the true fashion of Diary of a Jesus Girl, we're going to ask them to share their conversion story. So we're going to talk, start with Shanique. Shanique, tell us um, first, welcome to Diary of a Jesus Girl podcast. Thanks, Crystal. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> All right. So I want you to share um, So just a little bit about her. Again, she's an author. She's a speaker, a coach. I, like, I don't like the formal bio. I want her to, to just get into who Shanique is and just tell us about your conversion story. How did you come to Christ? All right. So I, I'll just use something the Lord had, a name the Lord gave me coming into this year Uh, for something he called me to do and it's global pollinator so 
it's it's essentially a very prophetic name that the Lord gave to me because he was saying, Shani, I've called you just like, you know, I don't know if you know, like the butterflies and the bees and so on, they pollinate flowers. So they carry pollen from one point to the next to ensure that uh, we have fruits. So they basically help us to, 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 to sustain ourselves on earth. And so the Lord was pretty much saying that you are a carrier of something profound, something powerful that when you can, when you come in contact with, with people because of what you carry from me. So, so I am the one who you're carrying stuff from to other people. So whether it's by speaking, uh, preaching, coaching, singing, writing and do so many other things but whatever it is i do basically the lord was saying you are my pollinator and i have called you to connect people to me and to carry something powerful to them so essentially that's what i use to define myself um i uh yes i i just feel like you know in this day and age it's something that we ought to take seriously in terms of our call the call on our lives and things god the things god has called us to do our purpose it's very important that we take it seriously and so being here today is just a blessing to share on this topic to share about celeb- uh, purity celeb- celibacy abstinence whatever it is we'll talk about just to share openly and to express to our viewers my journey my personal journey I became a Christian at the age of 12. So you probably could say I grew up in church. I I grew up with parents who well my mom was a Christian, my dad wasn't. My my dad and I got baptized at the same at the same time. But I grew up knowing print the Christian principles and and being grounded in the faith and so on. And so once I got saved, I mean I think you could basically say I didn't, I grew up, as I said, I grew up in church. So we kind of know the song them, we know of the clap, we know everything, the hallelujahs. You know, I, I, I would have grown up being exposed to that. And so, but it was a personal decision. It's not something I was forced into. I think me making that decision to, 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 to go to that altar, I vaguely remember what I was in. I was dressed in a green dress and I had little white shoes. And I stepped up to the altar when the pastor made that invitation. And I said, I will surrender my life to God. And since then, I've never looked back. Since then, I've been on the path towards pursuing purpose, towards uh, just pursuing God and pursuing his purpose for me, pressing in by prayer, pressing in through fasting, whatever it is. I've, I've just always been on this Jesus journey, to be honest. I've always been passionate. Not saying I don't have I don't have challenges where every now and again I don't really feel like you know this is the path I should be on or feel like I want to give up. Not saying that, but the truth is, I think God graced me for this journey because I've just been able to stick it through with Jesus. I've just been able to to advance in Him, and I've just been able to grow, grow, grow. If you listen to people, if people, if if you ask somebody who was Shan back then and who she is now they'll tell you that I have literally transformed like because who I was back then and where I'm now the Lord has truly done a great work in terms of emboldening me giving me confidence giving me uh you know the boldness to just step out and do do stuff so that's literally my story in a sense uh yeah basically (laughs) so I met Kalina out of her desire to write a book I, I'm not quite sure she probably have to share who recommended her to me but I know that we met and I helped her in the process of writing her book you know just kind of exposing her to the different aspect of blogging and just the possibility of her speaking and one thing I vaguely remember was she didn't have a title for her book she just knew that she had a story and she wanted to share that story. And I remember that. And to see how she has just blossomed, you know, speaking and coaching and, you know, just doing her thing. It really is a pleasure. And she still has her nine to five job. So she's doing both. And she's a mother of two and wife and all. So I'm really proud and excited to have her today um, on the podcast. So Kalina, start telling us a little bit about you and also your your conversion, how did you come to Christ? Krista, thank you so much for inviting me on to the Jesus Girl podcast. I feel like a celebrity because this podcast is going places. And thank I am you. So proud of you. 
so proud of your yes. Your yes is blessing others. Your yes blessed me. And I, I think how I came to know about Crystal Day, I had a friend who attended Alpha. She followed you on Facebook. And I'm going to tell you the truth. She just started complaining that she's just this Crystal Day person. You know, a lot of people were liking her posts. And she said, mm, and, I was, and I was like, okay, let me follow her. And then one day she said, one day I shared with her and said, did you see what Crystal posted today? And she said, sometimes I just tired of the same old, same old. <laughs> and I could not understand why she said that. But um, that's how I came to start following Crystal on Facebook. And what she meant by same old, same old is you sticking on that journey for Jesus, riveting, pushing it in, reminding people. I loved that. So I think that person at the time may have had her own struggles and so on. A lot of times what we are posting can really pierce people and rub them the wrong way, but it's not us, it's the Holy Spirit. And that's what drew me to you. I was like, yes, girl, she just taught the things them. And I, that's how I started following you on social media until um, God said, I said, God, God said, time to write the book. I said, Lord, lead me to the publisher. And it was Daylight Publishers. So I thank God every day for that divine connection. And I see you growing from strength to strength. I admire you from near. I admire you from afar. I love what you're doing. God bless you. My Christian journey, Crystal, it's important for me to say that unlike Shanique, I did not grow up in the church. Did not know any of that. My parents were not Christians. And I grew up... Um, Listening, you know, just being out there in the world. I went to church. I used to go to church as a child, but, you know, just force and go, not really knowing really why it's important to go. And when I was about 15 years old, my brother invited me to a church service. I went in my pants. It was a, an apostolic church. And I realized they were looking at me funny because I was in my pants and my earring and stuff. And that's when I learned that, you know, um, certain churches dress differently and believe different things. But after going for some time, I started becoming convicted of what the preacher would say and about Jesus. Because even though I was not going to church and I was not a Christian, I just knew that this Jesus, I think I know him. I think I have felt his presence before. I felt a familiar sense. And one day they had altar call. And this is me, a fiery little 15-year-old. I remember I was 15 when I got baptized because I turned 16 that year. And I decided I was going to get baptized today. But I went up and I, I wanted to turn back, Crystal. I wanted to turn back. And there was this church sister there who kept saying, don't turn back, do it, do it today. And and I did it. But it's important for our listeners to know that I regretted it when I finished. When I, when I got baptized and went under the water, when I came out, I felt different instantly. Instantly different. I don't know how to explain it. And I went home and I could not be mass. I was not the same, but I did not like how I felt. I felt like the music I was listening to, I was going to have to stop. It was an internal conversion began happening. Nobody said to me, you have to stop wearing this, stop doing that. I was a little hot girl at 15. I was turning 16. I thought I was everything in high school. You know, boyfriends, I had boyfriends. I, all the boys liked me. I thought I was everything. And I remember saying that I wish I did not do this. Fast forward many years later, it's the best decision I have done. And so... I got baptized at the age of 15 and filled with the Holy Spirit at 16. And that's how my Christian walk with, with the Lord began. I was the first in my family. I have four siblings. And as I said, none of us are Christian. We don't grow up listening to gospel and all of that. And I was the first. And that decision kind of, you know, kick off some uneasiness in my family. But God, of course, knew what he was doing by using me to lead others to also follow the same path in my family later on. 
Oh, yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you, for Colina. You know, I don't think I've ever heard. Uh, this is why I'm enjoy. I'm got no. I'm gonna enjoy this conversation with Colina. I I don't think I've ever heard anybody admit that they felt like you know giving their life to Christ was not the best thing because you couldn't live up to it. And I, there were seasons um, initially I felt like, you know, did I do the right thing? Because I wasn't sure if I could really live out this Christian walk. And then I want to also, um, it's funny because I did not know the story of you sharing about someone that attended high school with me. and didn't like to listen, um, read my post. And believe me, I get it a lot. <laughs> um, so I'm not offended at all because even my current best friend, and, and she was on the podcast a few weeks ago too, where she shared that initially she like had to like, like she wanted to block me because she was she was a Christian. She was a backslider. Every time she went on social media, she see me writing something, and she just hit. She just didn't like me because she's like, "This girl just uh, talk my business. This girl I uh, convict me." And then one day, out of the blue, she just messaged me like, "You know, um, I mean, just like that." I'm like, "Okay, this is what the Lord is saying." And a few weeks after she surrendered her life to the Lord, came back to Jamaica and then messaged me like, oh, God, say you must be my friend. And I'm like, why would I be your friend though? Like, we're not friends, you know? I'm just posting because of what? So I'm used to it. And I say that to somebody, and which is what we're going to get into, what we want to talk about regarding sex and sexual purity, celibacy and stuff. Because the truth is, if you are not willing to be unpopular, then you are not going to be able to walk out this Christian walk. And that is the truth. And the sex talk that we're going to have, and we're going to be real. You, well, you all know that I'm, I'm going to be real whether you like it or not. And I know that, you know, these women are going to be real too. So I want to start with Shanique. And Shanique is a virgin. And here's why I wanted her perspective. She's 26, I believe, right, Shanique? And she's a virgin. She has been holding herself for marriage. Of course, persons may say, okay, but she, she had the foundation of growing up in church. This is why she's a virgin. Hello? Um, no, because many of us know many, many people that passed us kid, right? Oh, Where, yeah. So that is not that is not a reason or that's not the, the reason for her to to hold her. so i want you to tell us um you know just tell us about that your journey i remember you were talking about just running from sexual um temptation and stuff so i wanted to tell us about for you what is purity or what is celibacy what, what is all of this about is this necessary um because the truth is god tell us that he will forgive us so shani come on if you did have sex god would have forgive you come on like you would have take away your anointing so i want you to be real with persons no right well you, you made some very good points in the initial stages. You said that, you know, there are pastors, kids, and people who grew up with a very solid foundation who I know, they slipped. They they had sex outside of marriage or, you know, they've been petting, touching, the, the works, whatever it is. And so if I wanted to have sex, I could have. I'm going to be very frank and tell you because a lot of opportunities have been presented to me. Men um, would just come. And I mean, flesh. the flesh is weak. And that's why I said, don't put any confidence in your flesh. The Bible tells us to flee, not, not, to, not to resist. So flee means to actively run away from. If you're in a position and you sense that this position is going to allow you to compromise on a certain aspect of your, your value system or your moral system, then move away from where, from that position. Don't just stay there and say, oh, I'm strong. Oh, the Holy Spirit will empower me to resist this young man. Or, you know, if you're a young, if you're a young man to resist the young lady, you have to develop an ability to not overestimate your flesh. I mean, yes, God has given us the ability to, to stand strong, but he says he gives us a way of escape. And so whenever that way of escape come, it's important for you to, to just run away from it. So I'm telling you, if I had, if I wanted to define myself, I could have a very long time ago because I remember sharing on um, Kalina's platform before that, you know, there's no tree growing in my face. I'm a, I'm a beautiful young woman. I would love to believe that. And so you know, attraction, men are attracted to me and I'm attracted to them. So I think that if I wanted to define myself, I could have, but the, the decision I made initially was to 
honor God with my body. From a very early age, I believe the Lord would have allowed me to enter into a covenant. I literally entered into a covenant with the Lord and something within me keeps me from from, from dishonoring that covenant. Once I've made a vow, vows are very important to me. Once I say, I'm going to do this and I give you my word, I do it because the power of a vow is so important. And when we make vows to the Lord, we have to keep them. And so I said to God, God, my purity belongs to you. My body belongs to you. And I also had a very high self, self-worth from early. So I said, any man will get me, it have to be my husband. Real, real. I just said, I just saw myself as a wife from very early growing up. I said, I'm not just a girlfriend. I am a wife. And so whichever man is going to, 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 to enjoy uh, my body has to come into a, a, a relationship, a, a very, a permanent relationship, which is through marriage and not just through any, uh, you know, just hit and go like that. So I, my decision was to honor God and, and purity, abstaining from any kind of sexual activity. And my definition of sexual purity is very expansive. Some people just think it's penetration of, of the vagina by the penis. I think it is way more than that. I think it is also petting, touching, uh, fingering. I hope we can get real here. Um, oral sex, um, kissing. All of, you know, them touch them very inappropriate yeah. stuff. I believe it is anything that can lead you to sex. So, for example, when you're kissing somebody, you know, you know, so you start, things start going in your body, you start feeling a certain way, and it can lead to things, especially if you and the person are in a, a very private setting. And so even in terms of guarding your, your space, ensuring that you are in, a, in an environment where you don't compromise on your purity. So watching over those little things are very important as well. But the root of it for me is that it's not the fact I'm not holding myself because I want to be a virgin when I'm married. I'm holding myself. I'm, I'm staying a virgin because I want to honor God. I want to please God. I decided that my purity was my sacrifice to God. And this is how I'm going to allow God to process me. Uh, and you know, when you, when you enter into holy pop, mix up, mix up, have sex with this somebody and whatever, you get distracted. A lot of things happen. Your mind astray, your, your relationship with the Lord also gets affected. And so I said to God, you know, God, I really am on this path with you. And I know that your plans for me are perfect. I know this is what you want from me. And I know you're going to strengthen me to do it. And the Lord has been able to keep me. I'm now 26. And I can say, yes, I'm still a virgin. I'm not going to tell you that opportunities have not come for me to, to define myself. They have. I've had to run. I've had to run, yes, like be in a setting with somebody privately. I'm going to just have to take on myself and say, you know, I'm going to go home. Or you know, say we have to just part ways right now because I sense that something is going on here and I need to we need to leave. I need to leave or you know, whatever. And so I've had to just set boundaries and, and and not just sit down and say, Oh, the Lord is going to give me the strength. I'm a woman of God, I am powerful, I'm anointed, and so every you know, every temptation that comes my way, I can resist. No. That, that mindset, yes, you are powerful and all that, but don't put any confidence in the flesh. And that has been my strategy over the years, just not overestimating myself and saying, you know, God, I'm going to honor you and I'm going to stay away from situations and circumstances that will tempt me or, or allow me to define myself. Wow, wow. I tell you, you know, silent killer, you know, man. I love, I love um, Shanique's and I said to her, earlier that you know i believe like virgins more virgins need to come out and show that it's it's there you know our young people don't believe that you can be 26 30 40 and be a virgin right they think that you have to be having sex because that's what the culture portray right and here's what i love with what she said she talked about worth she saw herself as a wife and and deserving of um, a man that will commit to her and let me be honest, there's, I can't remember ever thinking that I was going to be a wife before Christianity, to be honest. And even in the beginning of my Christian walk, I not think I always just wanted a, a baby father. It's so in a way, 
but it's the truth. Like most of the women that I saw that were successful, many of the women, I remember where, where I was working, the women that were the top, they were the, like the top um, CEOs and managers in the company. All of them had one child and they weren't married. And I'm like, okay, so I can be successful with one child and, you know, not be married, like married. And then I'm from the inner city. So very, 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 very few people get married, right? So to be honest, that was my mindset. And it's a worth issue, not feeling like you're worth. No, it's hard for confess this, you know. Because we think our worth is in our car. Um, we think our worth is in our education. We think our worth in the things that we have achieved. Because a few years like ago, you, you probably, me that, me that cuss you if you tell me that. But, you know, you have to be real with yourself. And I like, and one of the things I want to say to a young person or somebody that's listening, you need to renew your mind regarding your worth in this area to know that you are deserving. Like the Bible says that you are the good thing. He would have finds a wife, find a good thing. And that, that has been a verse that have kind of held me in my own prayer to walk, which I'll share more about later. But I have realized that I'm the good thing. Like, hello, Jesus said, I'm the good thing. So I'm worthy. No, I want to talk about Colina because the truth is Colina is married. Um, why would we be talking about sexual purity uh, when it comes on to, to, to marriage? And I don't want us to, to talk, because many people, most time we talk about married purity, we talk about purity and the mind, but we're talking about sex. I invited Kalina because she said something. She said, you know, let me not preempt her thing. Kalina, talk to us about you got saved at 16 and now you're married. Talk to us about your sexual experiences or purity journey or whatever um, that you have had. Because I don't want to preempt and talk. So I want you to share it with them. Well, Crystal, from a very young age, I did not know my worth. And I did not know that I did not know my worth. I've always had high self-esteem, self-confidence. I was probably one of the more popular girls in school. Very bright academically but something was missing and I did not know what. I was, um, a, what would you say? I saw pornography early and I remember, to be very real, started playing with myself from a teenage um, age, touching myself, finding out that it feels good to touch yourself down there and starting, started to think about sex a lot. And I remember that when I decided all of my friends in high school or most of them were having sex. And for me, nobody came on to me. Nobody pushed sex on me because I was always a very assertive person. I knew what I wanted. I was a go-getter. I was kind of feisty. So even the boys who I was seeing or texting, they didn't push sex on me. I remember the first time I had sex, I was the one who initiated it. And the young man himself seemed so scared. I can't forget. And I initiated it because I was like, what is this sex thing everyone is talking about? I need to find out. Only to have it and realize it to me. I remember thinking, but it's overrated. It hurts. It's very icky. And let's not get into all the gory details. Moving from that experience with sex and everything, I, as I said, did not know my worth and I became a people pleaser. So because I was attractive to young men, they always seemed to want to, to date me and to go out with me. And I didn't know my worth because I did not know Christ. It was as simple as that. I was book smart. I was quick to talk, full of confidence and you name it. But I didn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And it sounds cliche, but it's true. And so what I did, everyone who wanted to go out with me, I went. They wanted to have sex, I had it. And I found that I was spiraling down into a hole. Depression, lack of worth, you would not see it on the outside because I look so well put together. But I'm telling you, I had my fair share of sex. And even when I got baptized and I gave my life to God, I remember God speaking to my heart and saying, listen, put down this sex thing. You know, you're 
not to mention the spiritual tie that you're, you're having with these people and the Volipa spirit and everything mixing with all kinds of people. And I remember when I was 18 years old, I said a prayer. I broke up with my boyfriend at the time and I said, this is it. Now, remember, I was baptized at 15, 16, and I've been having sex, even though I was supposed to be a Christian and pure. I didn't know anything about that. I wasn't reading it. I wasn't studying. I was winging it. And I remember when I decided now to really surrender my life to God, I said, God, I'm done with the boyfriend thing. And me and you depend on the journey. I know it's got easy to resist sex because I don't have a boyfriend. Well, I wrote a list. It was a prayer list. And I was praying for the kind of husband I wanted because now me a teacher husband. I don't have a boyfriend, no husband. And I wrote down the kind of husband I wanted and I folded the list and I gave it to God and a few weeks after I met my now husband now Crystal I remember very early from I met this man a lot of men spoke to me I was in the corporate world working and nobody interested me like he did and I remember speaking to him and this glow just came over him one day and I just knew in my heart this man is my husband you know when you say you see wife material he was husband material and I fell in love with him and because of that we started I didn't flee we 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 found ourselves alone everything and the whole thing back into sex start again and of course sometimes you're tricked you're you're tricked into feeling I'm in love I'm this, I'm that the person loved me. So like nothing is wrong, something is wrong. Because while we were engaged in sexual intercourse back then, I could not shake the feeling that it was wrong. The Holy Spirit was telling me he was not happy and I was distancing myself from God. The way I used to pray, the way we used to be close and all of that. And you know what? Ironically, my husband saw me for the first time on a bus reading the Bible. Because when I decided to put down boyfriend and sex, I was devoted to God 100%. But I didn't have the test. I didn't have the distraction. So he saw me for the first time reading a Bible and he shared this testimony and said, she didn't even see me. She stood out to me because she was on a public transportation reading her Bible. Who does that? And that's what drew me to him. But here we were, two people struggling and he himself was a Christian from a teenager. He got baptized and we were both struggling and, and, and having sex. No, I remember when God spoke to my heart because in all honesty, I would leave church and go and have sex with him Sunday, on a Sunday afternoon. And I remember I decided I can't play with God anymore. I can't have one foot in, one foot out. So you know what? I stopped going to church. So, you know, further distancing myself from God. And after sex, nice and yeah, do it. Let me tell you, it only lasts a few minutes. Whether the sex lasts five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, as soon as it's over, the shame, the guilt, let me tell you, it wasn't worth it. It didn't matter how nice the sex was, as soon as it was over, the burden and the shame I was left with, it was not worth it, I'm telling you. And so I remember when God spoke to me finally and said, listen, you feel like this man is your husband? And you don't want to please me. I'm a jealous God. I started getting very strongly convicted that he was going to separate us. No, I didn't know how, if it was going to be sickness, death or what. But God said, I will separate you because um, I'm a jealous God. And I said to him, we have to break up. He did not want to, we, all of that, but that was the answer for me. Now, fast forward, we reunited, we got married, everything. But I'm saying I wish that I had kept myself from my husband because there's a kind of glamour nowadays where people believe, Crystal, that you can't have sex as long as you know you're going to get married or we're engaged. He's my fiance, she's my fiance, so nothing is wrong. No. Because up to today, day, I still feel I have to literally speak the word over my life. Romans 8 and say, there is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Because the guilt and the shame, it's still there. So it, the fact that you, I disobeyed God, that is still there. No marriage 
or anything. It didn't undo what I did that period. And, and, and every now and then I find myself wishing I had kept myself because it wasn't hard enough, but it was lack of knowledge. For me, it, it wasn't hard because nobody had pushed that onto me. It was lack of knowledge. And I find that I wish I had kept myself for him. You understand? And um, so where people are looking now to see, oh, marriage is so glamorous. And I tell them too, that even being married now, um, there is beauty in not being married and there's beauty in maintaining sexual purity. Because when my friends are up 3 a.m. praying and, you know, heaven coming down and they're experiencing the glory of God, I'm there attending to my husband, just like First Corinthians said, you know, the married woman, um, she's thinking about how to please her husband. And so there is beauty in sexual purity. I, for one, as a married woman, I can honestly say I wish I had waited wish I had waited and, and kept that between us. I, I can't imagine now what it would have done for our marriage because we have, been, we have struggled in our marriage as most people married do. But I know that there's a beauty in waiting that I missed. And so I'm here to tell those who are listening, you're not missing anything. You're not missing anything. And Crystal, just finally, I like to share this story because it is so real when i was young i remember crying in a room by myself when i was a teenager and i remember i felt the spirit of god come in that room and was comforting me i didn't know anything spiritual about god enough i just knew there was a presence in the room and it felt very nice and friendly and i was not afraid and i felt god comforting me and saying it's gonna be okay i'm here with you and I remember the presence was so strong and I could hear the voice of God in my mind so clearly that I said out loud, God I don't want you. I want a friend who I can see and touch. Because a long time, obviously it's a long time, you are man, I don't know. But I remember saying to God, <laughs> I remember saying to God, I don't want you. You know, I was tired of this invisible force. I wanted someone who could hold me and I could feel his arms around me, the strong arms. And I, and, and a lot of the problem too for me was I became exposed to reading romance novels very young. And when I used to read the part about how the man have the sex and he inserted it and in libido, you naturally, your body start reacting. So I think that had a lot to do with my story as well, being exposed to romance novels, being exposed to those movies, all of it. And fast forward, Crystal, to many years later when I was married, I remember one night being very sad and depressed. And I was crying and the tears were coming down my face so hot. And I looked over and my husband was fast asleep beside me, dead to the world. He did not know what I was going through. And right at that moment when I looked over at him, he wasn't even awake to comfort me. And I was feeling so empty and alone inside. And in that moment, God just took me back in the past when I was a young teenager. And I said, I don't want you, God. I want somebody who I can feel and touch to comfort me. And God showed me that moment there and showed me the person beside me and said, see him there? See him there to the person you can touch and comfort you and hold you? What is he doing? Dead to the world, fast asleep. And I broke down crying because it was the realest moment for me and just how much God loves us and just how much a husband or sex, none of that can fill the God-sized hole in our heart, the emptiness, the void, only a job for God. And that's my story. Wow. Boy, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really blessed by what Colleen has shared. I honestly have never heard, I mean, of, and this is why we call it a diary for Jesus girl, because I do have friends that, um, that have exp expressed this, you know, they wish they would have waited, but they would have never said it publicly. Publicly, once you invite somebody, they are going to always put on the best face, you know? Yeah, I waited. I didn't wait for sex, but look at my husband. No, we have made it together, you know, and we're still together and everybody put on the best face. And I'm so appreciative of Kalina honesty and transparency is all like like we said you know she's almost like she's writing in her diary this is how i felt i 
I should have waited. I could have waited. And we're not saying that one, if you did not wait and, and you did what Colina did in church, having sex, and then you get the husband, um, we, we do know that Romans 8 is, is, is the verse that we always use. But I don't want us, I want, and I want with us to understand that you have a choice to make. And we are trying to, this, the idea of this podcast is to inspire you, to educate you, to equip you with stories and testimonies of women that have made mistakes, hoping that you will say, you know what, I'm going to take my sister's word for it and I'm going to wait. Um, personally, in my purity journey, I stopped. Um, I decided in, I think it was 2013, I believe, and that I was going to commit to cry, commit to not having um, sex before marriage. Now, before that, to be honest, as a Christian, I told myself that I was not going to wait um, because I was not going to, I don't want any pussy in any bag. And that means that I'm not going to marry a man if I don't know if he can satisfy me first. That was my thought as a Christian. And that's the thought of many Christians. Actually, that's many Christians ask me that question. Suppose you marry the man and he can't please you. And then uh, it took me years to understand that one, I serve a good God. And if I'm a good, if he's a good God and I'm being obedient, why would he give me a bad thing? right? Why would he give me something that I would not enjoy? So by faith, I know that whoever I'm going to marry, that I'm, I'll be pleased. Another thing is that the truth is that we, when you think about when all of these things are just excuses, because I remember at one time I searched through the Bible and I did not see the word fornication. So I'm like, there's no way in the Bible says it's sexual immorality. It says adultery. Um, it never said Nothing about pornography, it never said nothing about masturbation, it never said nothing about fornication, right? Or sex before marriage or whatever. And again, we find excuses. It's almost like people use the Bible to, 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 as evidence to slavery, right? We use the Bible for so many other things, right? Um, out of context. So for me, I, throw, I made that decision. And I remember, to be honest, I have a child. I had a child in church and there were the times when the enemy would say, but which man I going know say you already experienced sex, already have a child, I go wait for you. And I, it, it took God showing me my word to say, if him can't wait, bye. Because the truth is I've had enough sex in my life. I'll be fine. I'll be f I remember saying that to the devil, like, I'll be fine. If him doesn't, if he doesn't want to wait, bye. And to be honest, Colina said a perfect thing that I want. Uh, when no guy is pursuing you, purity seems easy. When you don't have somebody in a, your, in a, your inbox and message you and all of that, purity seems easy because where's the temptation? But when you find somebody that you are extremely attractive to, that you are trying to court or date, that's when the true test come, right? And if you don't have these boundaries set up from before and understanding that you have to find somebody that is on the same page with you. And for me personally, I've had the experiences of men trying to convince me to have sex and telling me that nice guys, you know, really nice guys with good intentions. And they're saying, boy, you know, you should have sex and God, I go forgive you. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm choosing God first. I remember saying to um, a guy and I said it to my mommy with the guy too. I said, one, I'm not going to go to hell for penis. I'm sorry. Like, if I, anything I'm going to send me, I'm going to hell, I'm not penis. So I, that's one. Two, um, the truth is, if I can't honor God, then I, I will not honor you in marriage. If I can't honor God, I made a vow to God, and Shani spoke about the importance of vows. If I cannot honor God, a vow that I made to God to stay pure, then how can I? on a, a man in marriage. Because the truth is, I'm going to go into marriage and I'm going to see somebody as more attractive, probably meet somebody as that is, and how am I going to honor my husband if I cannot honor the God that I say I serve? So these are conversations that I want us to have. Now, Shanique, we're wrapping up. I can't believe that it's almost 45 minutes already that we have been on, but Shanique, you are a virgin. I want you to, the question though is, what if, no man wants to wait. 
what if, and, and I want to hear your take about what if you wait and you don't enjoy the sex. Um, I want to hear your take on what ifs. People, I'm sure, Shanik, you can tell me if people haven't asked you these things, right? Try, yeah. yeah, they have. Yeah. So I want to hear, and you can just speak to persons. Um, I tell people virgins need to, like, they need to go to the park class and say, you can wait, you can wait, because it's something to be, it's not that you're better than anybody. I don't think you're, a vir- because you're a virgin, you're better than somebody right. that had not had sex. I don't think you are. I just think that it's a, a option to give our young people and let people know that it is possible because at the current moment, it seems like it is impossible. So share on that. Okay. So you're saying having all these questions coming at me, what would I, what would I say to, to people who say that, um, what if you wait and the man can't please you and so on. All right. My response to that, to be honest, you said it earlier. You said God is a good God. And the scripture also tells us that God's plans for us are to prosper us, not to harm us. God is concerned with our well-being, our satisfaction, not just spiritually, but I think physically, emotionally, sexually, in every aspect of our lives. I think God is a, a very holistic God. And the kind of relationship that I've come to to have with the Lord, God has shown me who he is, his character, his nature. He has proven himself, himself to me in so many ways that made me develop such a confidence in him to say that, all right, I can trust God with my life. Literally. I don't have to worry. I don't have to fret. I don't have to, to, to wonder what's going to happen. I don't have to wonder if and when I'm going to get married, and if when I get married, a man going to have to satisfy me, will be able to satisfy me, or what if I wait long and, and nobody, I don't get no husband? Let me tell you something. I think God's gifts are great, and whatever God has for me, wherever it is, at whatever point it comes in my life, I believe that it will be what I need, not necessarily what I want, because I feel like sometimes we have, we also have some things in our mind as women and as men we have this list or we have these things that we desire i'm not saying god is not going to give us our desires but then we also have to be willing to say god give me what you want and give me at the time when you think i need it or when you know i need it because sometimes we feel like we need something at this season of our lives when really we still need to go through some a little bit more processing or god still needs to take us through a particular uh, you know, just process to ensure that we are ready to receive what he has for us and also ready to maintain it or to keep it because God can give you something, but you're not, you're not ready to, to, to hold it either to maintain it. So you get it and you lose it because you never really go through the process. But my response to these people would be, if you say you're a Christian, if you really know the nature of God, you know that God's plans for you, his word, his word tell, tells us, all sorts of promises that he has made to those who are righteous, those who walk upright, those who abide by his words. If you believe God's word, then you would have a great amount of confidence and you'd look around you and see that if God can do it for somebody else, he can do it for me too. What would stop me from accessing the blessings and the promises that God has for you? The only thing that can stop you is either yourself or the enemy. I mean, there are some of us who will have to break strongholds to be able to step into what God has for us, but that's a whole no, that's a whole other topic. But the thing is, God has given you the power to, to overcome all those things and access the the marriage the husband the wife that that god has for you so there's absolutely nothing that should make us feel as if uh waiting is wrong or waiting is going to wait we're waiting in vain then because sometimes we can harbor that we wonder am i really waiting in vain is it really going to come but personally for me those things don't bother me because my future is in god's hand and that's something i made a decision to 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 agree on and to think on i say father it's in your hands i i release control i had to get to a point of total surrender where i surrender my life everything about my life i'm say father god you know what you're doing now i don't know so please just to guide my steps and help me to come into alignment with whoever you have for me and it's also important to to pursue purpose while you are waiting on this person 
I mean, don't just wait around arbitrarily. Step into your purpose. Explore your gifts and your talents. Do things in the kingdom of God to advance the kingdom. And while you're serving, that's when you might very well meet the person who God has for you because you are walking in purpose and that allows you to come into alignment with your purpose partner. So in a sense, the confidence I have in God won't make me worry about them something that them can't speak. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that answer. Kalina, um, we're trying to, well, my, recently I said, you know, we're trying to wrap up, we want to look at time and quite a few of my listeners says, listen, when we are listen, we're not thinking about time. We are wash, we are wash up the plate and everything. So just talk, could have just talk, right? But Kalina, you know, you said something and the Holy Spirit just brought it. You said, I had a high self-esteem. I was a very confident woman. I, I would walk in a room and I was very feisty. I knew what I was about. But I didn't realize that I had a worth issue. So I wanted to kind of come back there. Like we have a wheel and come back right there. So um, talk to us about that. How, how you know? Because some people will think that the esteem and the confidence and the worth, all of it's every, the same thing. Tell us how you know the difference, one. Um, what for you, how do you know that you don't have worth? And how can you possibly and and colina has a book whoops i broke my nails ladies you want to go and read that book right and shanique is also an author um her for today um i know it's a devotional book so we're gonna put it also in there so you see a link to amazon to get a copy of their books but colina talk to us about the esteem the confidence worth and how do you find that word um as yeah Crystal, from a very young age, let me just share a quick story. When I was 10 years old, I used to go to a primary school and I didn't have a lot of money back then living in the inner city. And I remember one day I was playing a game of Dandy Shandy and I was very thirsty and I did not want the hot water from the pipe. And most of the boys in my class back then liked me and would play around and, you know, you know, they had a crush on you. And I wanted $10 to buy a bag of juice. And I remember asking, thinking about who to ask for the $10. And I said, no, I'm not going to ask Tom, Peter, John, because they're going to want something from me. I remember at 10 years old thinking that. So I decided to go and ask a boy I considered as a nerd. And let's call him Paul. And I decided Paul was a nerdy little computer boy. If he liked me, he was too afraid of me to say it. And I decided to ask because it looked like a little wimp, in all honesty. And I asked Paul for the $10 to buy a bag of juice. And you know what Paul required of me? A kiss. And Crystal, somebody who is popular, who the girls looked up to, who the boys had crush on, who the teachers liked because I got all A's. I gave Paul the kiss for $10 for a bag of juice. And that was at 10 years old. And I didn't know it then that that I didn't even know my worth. I didn't know my value. Back then, Paul valued me at $10. Mm? And that grew from me then as a child straight into um, adolescent and adulthood. And Crystal, when I say I was confident, I was confident in my own abilities. I, As I said, I was a straight A student. I could speak well. I knew all the right things to say. I had high self-esteem. I used to walk with my head held high in the air. I knew all the right things to say. I was confident in my own um, abilities, but I didn't have any sense of worth. And that sense of worth I'm talking about is the one that says, I am God. I'm righteous. Hence, you're righteous. Um, you're worth more than you think. Don't let anyone um, put a price on you. And the reason why I know I didn't have any self-worth is because of the choices I made. So for those who are listening, how do you know if you're lacking in self-worth? For me, if guy one wanted to go out with me and I didn't want to go, I went. If he wanted a kiss, I gave him a kiss. I found that I was entertaining a lot of different people because I didn't want them to be sad or upset. I remember to be very frank, I like to be very open. One boy who I didn't like, he, he, he had a huge crush on me and I went to his house just for him to be okay, just so he would stop begging me. Like those kind of things, you don't even realize that you're sick. 
Like nobody don't tell her that you have a serious problem. And yet when the sun rose, I was walking around like I was all that. But beneath it all, behind closed doors, I was giving into all these things. I was entertaining these things. I remember I had a boyfriend who lived overseas. And because we were in a long distance relationship, he asked me for a video of myself naked. And I made the video and sent it, fully well knowing it could have, he could have taken it and shown it to anyone, fully well knowing it could have gotten lost over the internet. I knew these things. So why wasn't I doing what I should have been doing? Why was I still sending naked videos over the internet? Why was I still entertaining people? Hmm? These are questions I wasn't even asking myself. I just knew that I felt dirty and I just, I felt wrong. And it wasn't until I, I broke down and said, God, I need you, that God started revealing these things to me and showing me. So my self-confidence um, was in my abilities and in myself and in my clothes and in my, my A's and in my job. I had a very good job at a young age. That, you know, that self, it's a false sense of security. That's what it is. False sense of security in thinking you're all that so that you don't know that you need God. Wow. Wow. You couldn't have said it better, you know? And this is why when you talk about, to be honest, when people talk, talk about self-esteem and um, self-worth, I, I, I try not to use those titles because self, anything with self, the Bible tells us let self be slain because when anything in self, it means that we are walking our own identity, our own abilities, as you mentioned. And this is not about the self-worth. So we're not going to get on that. We're going to definitely do another podcast about self-worth, but just something to pull out of what Kalina says. This is why we will not believe God. We will not believe that a man is going to wait for us because we don't realize who we are in God. We don't know our identity in who. Shani said it perfectly. Um, Shani said it perfectly. She said, I know I have a relationship with God and I choose to believe what God has said about me. So I can't believe God partly and then believe it. Like I believe that he would provide for me, but he can, he can provide food for me, but he can provide a man. Why would I believe that God is going to know, you know? So I really wanted to, so as Shanique, is, let us get back to the main point of this podcast. Is sexual purity, if celibacy, celibacy is abs, um, abstinence, is it necessary right now? Why can't we just have sex and ask, grace covers us. Grace covers a multitude of sin. Why not, right? Um, if, is it, possible is it necessary answer that question you mentioned grace and a lot of us use grace as a crutch to sin it's important for us to 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 not frustrate god's grace yeah it's accessible but don't frustrate it so not because he has pardoned your sin means you're going to use it as an excuse or as a gateway to now continue doing it but essentially as you 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 would have asked is, is it necessary? I think it's necessary. The word of God is timeless. It's relevant at all stages of time. So whether it was long before Christ, Christ came and when he was here on earth or now that he's no longer here and we have the Holy Spirit instead as a comforter, it's, it's timeless. And the word of God tells us that our body is the temple of the Lord. When you think about a temple, you think about something that's consecrated unto God, something that's holy, that's set apart. And I think about something where the Holy Spirit can dwell, as in live. Think about it. If, if the Holy Spirit is going to dwell within you, then inside of that body, your thoughts, the, the kind of actions, the mindset, the heart posture, uh, you know, what you think about on a daily basis, the kind of thoughts and things you entertain, the conversations, the relationships, it has to be in keeping with 
with the fact that you want to facilitate God's presence. Anything that offends the Holy Spirit ought to offend you. And so if there is something that is in contradiction to the Holy Spirit, then you have to be willing to release it. And celibacy, abstinence, whatever you say, purity, it's necessary because when you give yourself over to God, when you say, Father, I am giving over myself to you in I'm, I'm honoring you with my body. I'm honoring you with, with my, my purity because I know this is something you require of me. And by virtue of me giving myself over to you, I know that you're going to fill me with your presence, especially if you're a man or a woman who wants to pursue purpose and wants to fulfill your purpose on earth. It's very critical. You can't just enter into any arbitrary relationship. You can't just be sleeping around. You can't just, oh, let me have a little piece of sex here. And then, you know, you move on. Or let me just test it out here. Let me do a little fondling here. And, you know, you can't be that. You have to remain in a position where you, you facilitate the presence of God. So for anybody who wants to be, who wants to do great exploits for the Lord, as I'm talking about like probably kingdom people now, or if you're not a Christian and if you really want to become your best self, then this is something you have to commit to because the more you stretch yourself, the more you, you leave peace of your, your, your body here with this person, you know, soul ties is one thing that, that that's very uh, real when you sleep around with people and you have sexual intercourse and so on you know you leave pieces of yourself with them and so you you get disintegrated but for you to be a whole person a whole woman a whole man celibacy is important because i think it's just a a, a sacrifice god honors sacrifice and he looks at sacrifices as a as a sign of you being willing to kill flesh to serve him kill flesh to to, to, to give over yourself to him and to also look stupid, stupid for him. Because some, we look stupid, those of us who are on this celibacy journey, sometimes people will say, what, that looks stupid. Why are you doing that? I mean, that's not necessary now. You can you can, t- you can test a peace, man. Not God now, but you can't ask for forgiveness after. It's not about you. It's about me and my Jesus. It's about the covenant I made with him. And once I've committed to that, I'm going to stick it out. So, it's necessary, people. Don't make nobody trick you. Don't make the enemy trick you and tell you that, oh, you can, you, there is grace, so you can always go and ask for forgiveness. If you, it's possible. So stick, stick to the path. And if you have slipped up, you can still come back. But if you are on the, on the syllabus journey, you're able to stick it out. I've done it, and I will continue to do it until I meet my husband. Amen. Praise Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Praise Jesus. You know, uh, this is such a, I, I, I'm enjoying myself. I'm enjoying this conversation. Uh, Kalina, I just want you to share with um, probably somebody young, um, just somebody that is saying, you know, why? Why should I? You know, why should I wait? How should I wait? Why? Um, just share your last few words in why you think that it is necessary. and. Uh, yeah, I just want you to, to share. I, uh, I can speak from the perspective of someone who had sex before marriage, someone who is having sex now. And let me tell you, young people, let me tell you, young, my, my pastor likes to say young is 90 and under. Young people, let me tell you, you're not missing anything. People, you, people will say, stop lying. You're only saying that because you're getting it. What I'm trying to say, yes, sex is nice, sex is beautiful, but that is only within the confines of a marriage. Let me tell you, the guilt, the consequence, so while, God has, while God is full of grace and while he forgives, there are consequences for every action. Just like when David wanted Uriah's wife and she had the baby and he prayed that God will save the baby's life. God will forgive you and God's grace is, is, is um, sufficient for you, but there are consequences. And I said it before and I'm going to say it again. I believe that there is something beautiful that my husband and I did not get the chance to experience because we didn't wait. And quite frankly, I don't think I'll ever get to know what that is because it gone bad already. 
but you should wait because your temp your body is the temple of God. Um, the grass looks green on the other side. It's not. It it, it isn't always is. And also, soul ties. Each time you have sex with someone, you're tied to that person. Um, their curses, whatever wicked forces, whatever thing is upon their life. I'm telling you, I've seen people started getting drained financially because of the people who they're sleeping with. It's a spiritual warfare. We're not going to get into that tonight, but it is important to know from, take it from somebody who did it. Every time I had sex outside of marriage, I got up feeling dirty, guilty, full of shame. You can't even go on your knees and pray because you realize you just feel dirty and it's not worth it. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And um, as I said, even though um, we are married today, I did not win a prize. I did not get the man. I think I am lucky because God forbid that same man could have just had his way with me and left. And a lot of people have experienced that so I'm not lucky. I didn't get the husband because um, we had sex. No, it's just by the grace of God. And so many people do it and still end up alone. So wait on the Lord. You will not be disappointed. As I said earlier, my journey started from reading romance novels, from listening to music that entertain that kind of thing. Um, don't touch yourself to please yourself because you're just torturing yourself it's not easy but it is worth it thank you kalina so you know i must put some caveat um and some things one kalina is not saying that you know if you have had sex, you have gotten married, that you're not worth it, or, you know, you make the biggest mistake of your life. Or, she's not saying that, right? But what I appreciate is the honesty, and we are not honest. We are not honest people that many times we feel this way. Many times um, you find, and men say it, you know, sometimes when they are having sex with the woman, they're wondering if they used to, to, to do that with another man. Things like these men think about. Also women, you know, we wonder if he, you know, if, if he's thinking about somebody else and things like that. So we're not saying that, oh, if you have done it, oh, curse be unto you, you're not forgiven uh, like you're, are, and if you had saved yourself for marriage, you know, you are better than that person. Definitely not, right? The blood of Jesus Christ is, is where our identity is found, right? What we're saying, we're being honest, and she's being honest um, to say that marriage is not a pr the prize, right? Marriage is just another season. And yes, she has, she's, you know, she's enjoying the fruit of being married and having sex in marriage, but it, she would have done it differently. So understand that. Because I know Simone, you know, I know sometimes you know, misunderstand what people are saying and you don't agree, right? What she, she This is not about you agreeing in her, or not. This is her testimony. And she's saying to somebody that ch choose to please God first. The, this conversation is just simply to say, choose God first. If you choose God first, then you can't lose. Here's not what we are saying because I know people that they, they got married, um, you know, as virgins and then they divorce. And then you're like, why did I bother keep myself in marriage? One, you're not keeping yourself for the man. And Shanique said it. You, if, you, if you try to do anything to please man, and I mean man, whether a woman, because Eva's a man, if you're trying to please a woman first, believe me, She's going to fail you. He's going to fail you because man is fickle, right? You, we do what we're doing to please God. He's the person that we're thinking about at all time, right? So even if my marriage, if I save myself for marriage and it didn't work out for whatever reason, that's not, that's not to say that I should have, I shouldn't have done this or you know, no, we're definitely not. It's to please God. And the truth is you're going to choose God sometime. And the persecution, life is not perfect. You're going to be persecuted for choosing God. Uh, Shanique said it. Are you willing to be a fool for Christ? Paul says it in Corinthians. 
actually Shanice a copy where Paul say are you willing to look like a fool for Christ that's what we're saying choose to please God and and in the on episode, I think 18, when we interviewed the persons talking about masturbation and pornography, they had they spoke about praying and saying, God, help me to choose you first. Because the truth is, when I used to party, I used to enjoy it. When I'm having sex, I'm enjoying it. When me, I used to take the man their money, you best believe me, I enjoy it. Right? <laughs> no, the truth is, there are repercussions that we don't like to talk about. Everybody wants to bury bury and okay and this is why many of us can't walk into our purpose many of us can't walk into because we, we we're still dealing with a lot of guilt and shame and embarrassment for our decisions and what we are saying is listen this is our diary there's nothing new under the sun there's nothing new Kalina I'm sure there are many other women that feel the same way too um there are other virgin um, that are probably wondering, should that young girls, if you're 14, 15, you have not had sex and you're, and you're being pressured into having sex because it's, you're, you're here, it's nice. And there, there is, like sin always has a, a, has a repercussion. There is always, whether you probably sometimes it's not the same time, probably you don't get pregnant, but you, there is something that's always happening when you disobey God. So I want to end on this note to, to say to somebody that, Choose God first. And I'm going to ask, I'm going to end specifically how I ended it on Colina's live um, video to say, I'm talking to one, the, the person, if you're not a Christian, you know, we do altar call on this podcast all the time. And if you don't want to hear about Jesus, then, but I know that you're listening. So that means, you know, you want to hear about Jesus. If you are not a Christian, understand that you choosing to not have sex before marriage will clap you. It's a good act, but it means nothing because you can be a virgin and go straight to hell. What you say? Yeah, man, you can save yourself from marriage and go straight to hell because you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So if you don't know Christ and what we're saying is that you have had experiences for sex. I've had like enough sex in my lifetime to say that, listen, choosing God first is always like, if it never, I tell people all the time, if Chris, if I came into Christ and it was not what I expected, my gone back in other world a long time. Like I'm not, nobody had, nobody forced me to do this. I, my parents did not tell me to become a Christian. No, this is a choice. And I chose this walk and it's the best decision that I could have ever made. And if I did not mean that, I would have gone back, gone in a battery rider shot and gone, uh, I don't even know what a party they want to keep right now. <laughs> right? Um, right? So if you don't know Christ, I want you to understand that we want to, don't, don't just choose to, 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 to stop doing things. If you are having, if you don't know Christ, don't wait until, oh, don't tell yourself, say, oh, me, I forgot to stop doing this first. Me, I forgot to stop. Listen, don't stop doing it. We don't want a willpower around here. We want a Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. So choose to please God first. Choose to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. If you are a man and you're listening to this, because we were talking about it the other day um, on Kalina's, Kalina's live. And the truth is, sometimes every time you hear about purity talk, it's always about women. Hello? You think we have sex with ourselves? Well, sometimes we have sex with ourselves. But for the most part, <laughs> we're having sex with men. So that means that you guys need to be pure too. Uno a virgin woman, and then uno want go through the whole of the church. You play on the mm -hmm. choir, you are singing on the choir, you play in the drum, and you're having sex with umo too much woman, and then you're a tab you want a virgin. Bye, boy. Bye. Like, listen, we want pure man too. Right? So choose, even as a man, I'm saying that you have to walk into purity too. And don't come tell me, oh, you know, we don't understand. Man needs sex or not need Jesus. Like everybody is. I don't know why men feel like right. men don't have temptation. Like all of us need Jesus. The same temptation on a have. Yes, all right, on the hormones kick up and on a thing, stand up and listen. I'm sure there are many men. I know a lot of men that are virgins. I have a lot of virgins that are virgins. That are, and I'm sure they struggle with the same thing. But they are waiting because the Holy Spirit empowers them. And for the person that, if you are, having, you are a Christian and you are having sex, we are not condemning you. 
listen, I get pregnant in a church. Really? You think somebody can condemn you? No. What we're saying is that, um, which I wish somebody had had, had this conversation with me while I was in church, while I was having sex, because the truth is when I was having sex in church, everybody that I knew, well, most of the persons I knew, they were having sex too. So nobody had the conversation to say, listen, choose to please Christ first. Don't make penis sin you go hell. Don't make no vagina sin you go hell. Choose to please God first. And once you honor God, then it will be worth it. So Shani, just tell us about your book in 30 seconds, how they can find you, and then Colina share that, and then I close. Okay, so my book is Equipped to Impact, A 40-Day Journey to an Empowered Life. So this book, ideally, is a journey towards uh, becoming your best self as a kingdom woman, as a kingdom man. So it's very holistic. One of the things I speak about in the book is actually this very topic, the, the power in purity. And I talk about how Samson would have lost his strength because he he compromised uh, because of and, and laid with Delilah or or he showed his strength to Delilah. And a lot of us don't recognize that. That's a story in and of itself, or that's a lesson in and of itself for us to recognize that when we compromise on our our purity, we reveal our strength or we give over our strength to the enemy, and then he can basically come into our lives and take over. And so uh, my encouragement, and we have to recognize too that, you know, in this particular part of the, the book, I talk about how submission, denying your, your flesh is a powerful gesture of submission, just giving over your body to God and saying, Father, take full control. And it facilitates the move of God in your life. So if you want to find my book, you can either message me personally on Facebook or I'm on Instagram. My name is Shanique Chan on Facebook or Instagram, Shanique Chan JA. It's also on Amazon.com. Um, and then we can make arrangements in terms of pick up or whatever it is so you can reach out to me but this book is very powerful we talk about having dominion yeah here's a here's a just a view of it we talk about having dominion in the kingdom how god has called us to use our gifts to advance his kingdom uh what what exactly is kingdom work and how we can mobilize ourselves to really do kingdom work so guys if you want just reach out to me and let's let's just create impact and create waves in the kingdom together. Uh, thank you again, Shanique, for joining us today. And I'll leave the link for you to follow her, but also to get her book on Instagram. Colina, tell us about what you do and a little bit about your book as we close. Well, Crystal, I am a, an author, a motivational speaker, and a self-worth coach. And my book, Oops, I Broke a Nail, Dig Yourself Free from Past Hurt, discover your true self-worth. And oops, I broke a nail because I found that many women, the book is targeted for young women. And I discovered that many women like myself didn't know how to fight, was sitting back and just taking defeat. And I said, no, 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 this is how you fight. And when you fight, you might have to break a nail, but trust me, you have to get up and dig yourself out of the rut. And the book speaks about discovering your true self-worth. It shares a whole of my, my testimonies about how I didn't know self, my own self-worth and the mistakes I made and the consequences I had to suffer as a result of those mistakes. And the book is available, different bookstores in Jamaica, on amazon.com as well. Reach out to me on social media at the Worthy Girl Workshop. Um, on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, because and the Worthy Girl Workshop is my coaching program where I coach young women um, further on just the value of knowing their worth and their worth in God. So I just want to say thank you, Crystal, for inviting me on this podcast um, to share. God bless you and God bless your listeners. All right, so that's it for the Diary for Jesus Girl this week. And of course, we had the real, raw, relevant, riveting conversation about sex, purity, cel celibacy, abstinence. Listen, choosing Christ first 
is always the way. And as we said, we are just women that love Jesus. We desire to please Jesus. We desire to impact like Jesus. But guess what? We are women that are dealing with the flesh and get, we want to just be able to inspire and encourage each other. So I pray that you are blessed. If you're a man that's listening, I know that we have some men that are listening. I'm going to, you know what I'm going to start to do? Send me your comments and I'm going to start shouting you out. So each week I'm going to start shouting out some of my listeners. So today I'll start with Jeremy, one of my very good friends, Jeremy um, Egged Parkinson, right? When he messaged me to say, Crystal, you know, I'm listening to your podcast. I can't like, listen, Jeremy don't listen, nothing. So I know that God is, is really doing a good work in um through me and through my listeners and through this podcast so thank you for joining us and we see you next week for another episode of the diary of a jesus girl and this is crystal i'm out god bless you diary of a jesus girl